Mm. Lovely weather we're having. Oh, uh, we needed it. Yeah, we really needed this. It I've was... actually never felt so happy about a rainy afternoon. It was so dusty and dry. It was pretty dusty and dry. So it started raining this afternoon. It's rained the whole day, which has been glorious. Very it did good. freak me out at about four o'clock this evening. I was like, oh, I haven't milked the cows yet. Cause I thought it was like almost dark. Cause it was so great. Yeah. And cause I'd been in the kitchen all day. I lose track of time whenever I'm working in the kitchen for mm -hmm. several hours in a row, but I still have time to milk the cows and shoot this video. You do. Maya, look. Rainbow. You see it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, y'all see it? Oh, it's lovely. This is the second one in the last two weeks. Oh, it's getting so dark. Maya, it ends over there. You can see where it touches the ground. Can you see it on this side? This happened last time. Look! It's over there. You can see where it comes all the way down in front of the trees. Oh, this is gorgeous. That makes me so happy. What is it about a rainbow? Just... Uh, it's oh. light. <laughs> it's light. Well, that is, that is, that is it about a rainbow. <laughs> Well, I mean, fraction. you just get fascinated with light, like the sun setting behind the trees. Or... I do get fascinated with light. It's gone! No, it's still a little it's bit still there. there but, I, mean, I do get fascinated with light. So. That's a photographer thing. Oh, I'm so glad I got to show you guys that. It was quite fleeting. It's fading away now. And you thought that. That was lovely. I've always been just wildly fascinated with rainbows. I love them, and so anytime that I see them, it just... I just feel so much joy. <laughs> oh, my alarm's going off. My canning is ready to come out of the canner. Water bath. Don't ever walk away from the pressure canner. <laughs> I walked away from the water bath, but not a pressure canner. Well, technically, it was my pressure canner, but I'm not pressure canning. I don't have the lid on it. All right, just loaded up the canner with the next batch after taking the last batch out done a lot of canning today and I wanted to kind of share with you guys what I'm doing <laughs> Jackson Jackson's making a lazy man's load up to the trash can right now it's so whenever you try to carry everything in one load so that you don't have to make two loads <laughs> And it's a much it's a much harder one load oh yeah he said actually three that would have been three loads today in this video i want to talk to you some about food preparedness uh, food security emergency preparedness whatever you want to say um, i did a video a few weeks ago called the urgency to grow food um, i think that's a really good starting point and i hope that you guys have watched that or will watch that um, if you are looking for food preparedness information. I just think that's a really good place to be, to, to not let fear drive you. Uh, but whenever we feel the urgency to do something, it's really important that we listen to that and it's not fearful to be prepared. It's actually great wisdom to be prepared. And I am hesitant sometimes to talk about this topic because so many people tend to get afraid. And so if you feel afraid when talking about food preparedness, please go watch that video. And uh, hopefully that'll help quell those fears. But this is a topic that I really do feel like we need to talk about. Oh, did y'all hear that little pop of that jar? music to my ears so um right now as of today late may of 2022 uh, we're definitely seeing some tumultuous things in the news and potentials of food shortages some some kinds of things are even promising food shortages because of current events and i am obviously very much pro garden i love the garden i want everybody to grow a garden i have some projects coming up to show you guys like simple ways if you're in a neighborhood or a rental that you can't just go out and build a, a larger garden that you could do something uh, because even small efforts i think are very valuable and they're going to give you wisdom and experience which are uh, two extremely valuable things to have but uh, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes growing all of your food is not um, an option. And so buying things to prepare 
in conjunction with growing things can uh, really give us a sense of security. And one of the things that I'm currently doing that I wanted to share with you guys because I just think it makes this kind of preparation accessible to so many more people is uh, all of this, these tomato products, I didn't grow these tomatoes. And uh, normally I do grow enough tomatoes to put up a lot of tomato products. But last year we moved in July. And so I did not can anything. And of course, by that point, we had pretty much gone through everything that I had preserved the year before. So we moved here without a lot of canned goods. And um, obviously haven't grown anything since we got here. We're working on it. I should be uh, putting up harvest this summer. But in the meantime, I don't have a like heavily stocked pantry of things I preserve in my garden. So I actually went to a local like food supply store that's open to the public um, and bought some of these big, uh, these are called I think number 10 cans, uh, but it's like a six pound, seven pound can of tomato products. I got some whole tomatoes, I got some pizza sauce, and I separated those out into quarts for the whole tomatoes, into pints for the pizza sauce, into usable portions because even though I do have five hungry sons, we have a big family and often have guests, um, I still don't need seven pounds pizza sauce at a time. So it also makes this stuff more economical because buying the big can, it brings the price down of each individual serving that I'm buying. And I just like having this. Now, I also think it's a really great option if you are in that classroom stage and maybe you wanna learn how to can, but you haven't grown anything yet or maybe you're just starting to garden and you're not growing enough to can I don't know why people think like that you can only can your own homegrown produce that's so not true like learn to can on this stuff so that you've got it down by the time you have your precious homegrown produce because you'll be much more successful at it because you know you might make a mistake you might have some jars that don't seal and it would be so much better if that happens here rather than after you've worked so hard for months to grow the tomatoes out of your garden. Now food service size products like those big cans, those are available at restaurant supplies that are often open to the public like US food stores at membership stores like wholesale stores like Costco and Sam's and a lot of times you can even find them at Walmart which makes that something really accessible. Now do look up what needs to be pressure canned versus what can be water bath canned uh, because like those tomatoes have citric acid in them so that they can be properly canned and I just follow the instructions as if I had prepared those tomatoes for canning. So I water bath can them for things like 40 minutes um, for pine 45 minutes for quarts and um, make sure it's got at least an inch of water on top leave about an inch of head space and that's just what I do now I'm gonna make a little side note here before I move on to the next little point of food preparedness because this is very impromptu a lot of times I do these kind of videos and I outline them and I make sure that I give very precise information but I've been in the kitchen canning all afternoon and uh, it's this or nothing for today so this is what we're gonna do Actually, full disclosure, I don't know if it's recommended or not recommended to take big cans of food and split it up and can that individually, like re-can that. Um, and to be entirely honest, I don't care. Um, I am disclosing that so that you can make an educated decision for yourself about what you are comfortable with doing. Now. I want to make a confession that food preparedness and emergency preparedness is a topic that I have danced around and not really taken head on. Um, because frankly, every time you stand up to talk about this stuff, it's like a, a bunch of people just cut your legs out from underneath you. And they're like, well, don't do that. That's not this. That's not that. That's not the best. And then they start saying stuff like you're going to kill somebody. And it scares me. It, frankly, it scares me to give advice that's not sound. It's very important to me that if I'm giving advice um, that I'm not misleading people. That's it's important to me. And I think that's why in a lot of cases you guys really trust me because I think that you know that that's important to me. I don't promote products that I don't spend my own money on. I don't, um, I don't tell you something that I wouldn't do myself. And 
the problem is is that in that fear I've been doing things myself that I haven't been really telling you because I don't want to be told that's not okay and that I that's another kind of dishonest and the fact is is that I've never been a food prepper I have never been the kind of person that has a year's worth of dry goods I've never done that before I've always had a garden. I've never felt the need. Um, and I, I truly believe in being led. Um, and, and I just, I truly believe in the provision of God and being led and being just moved by the Spirit in a place that you are prepared. And when COVID happened, we were prepared. You know, I had a greenhouse full of food. I had a freezer full of meat. We had ordered all of the stuff to like start meat birds. And when everything got back order, we already had it. It was like this crazy thing that made me feel honestly very brave and comfortable that like okay just be led and it'll be okay but the truth is is that I have felt extremely led in the last handful of months to become prepared and I've started making some preparedness um, content and I, I don't want to say this without reminding the foundation of that urgency to grow food this is not fear this is not a fear thing this is simply a thing of if I'm being completely honest with you I'm making the measures to put up what I can in as economical a way as possible. Um, this isn't just a thing of like, oh, I'm going to just, you know, spend whatever it takes to put up an you know, exorbitant amount of food. I'm being economical about it. I'm, I'm doing it in such a way that if nothing happens, great, we'll just, we'll eat through this stuff over the course of the next year or two. And, you know, I'll continue to re-up it and use what's older and, and, you know, buy newer stuff and put in the back of the storage and I, I'm doing this in a way that is not wasteful and that is feasible and that is doable but I am doing it. I am feeling the urgency to do this. Not alarmed necessarily, maybe a little bit, you know being alarmed I don't think is necessarily a bad thing it's just when the alarm's going off it's just time to get up, it's time to move. Um, concerned, maybe yeah. Um, I don't have a formula baby right now, but I did have a formula baby seven years ago. And so I feel a great deal of compassion for the plights of other people. Um, and obviously I am aware of the fact that I am in a much more secure position than a lot of people are. Uh, because I have a farm, because I have seven gallons of milk coming in every day for my cow, because I have freezers full of meat. That's true, I have those things. And as I really ponder that, the thing that I can do the most is I can teach you these things and I can show you these things and I'm sorry if it scares you I really am but um, I want to be honest about my life I want to give an honest overview of my life and this is where I am um, having some dry goods having food underneath the beds in your house having some food in the closets is going to give you a sense of security and if nothing happens and you don't need it great but if you do it would be a good thing to have. Now I'm not saying run out and rush the stores and buy up all the different things and, and hoard things and all of that. I, I'm not saying to do that. However, the fact that um, that's what we're going to when we talk about having food preparedness and it's like, well, don't be a hoarder. It's not hoarding. It's um, actually very much something that has been very culturally normal for a long time to have food stores because for a long time people ate seasonally. So during the seasons of much, they put up their food and they learned how to live on it for a year until the next season. And a lot of times it wasn't just a yearly cycle. It was like, oh, we had a season of much, like it grew really well we'll put up as much as we can because we might have to live on it for three years until the next season of much um that's like just that was the very normal way of doing things until the modern conveniences of shipping food where we got into the idea that at any time of year um, at any time of day even you know we can go into a fully stocked grocery store and buy whatever we want and that's just not how things were and so reverting to this mindset of storing during plenty for the inevitable lacks that happen in life um, means that we never have to live in lack. We always get to live in abundance. But it, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a big deal to get you to where you'll be glad that you've got some food put up. Um, you know, people can lose a job. People can fall, be down on their health. So I really do encourage you guys to practice canning. Learn to can. Put some stuff up. And then also another really great way to start putting up food storage in a 
in a, an affordable way is uh, getting some Mylar bags. Now Mylar bags are, ex they're too expensive to use for short term storage. If you wanna do short term storage, even if you're in a pretty small place, you can get these big totes, um, like reusable totes, jars. I, I have bought bulk for a long time using big like Rubbermaid totes where I would buy 50 pound bags of flour and sugar because I was feeding such a big family that it really made much more money sense for us to buy bulk than buy smaller bags. It just, they add up to be significantly more expensive. And so if you have like big totes, it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing thing to have massive totes off to the corner of your kitchen, but they've been in the corner of mine for a very long time. I actually have jars on my counter. You guys comment on those a lot, these two gallon jars. I got those at Walmarts. Uh, but I also always have big plastic containers that have the backup to that. Cause we go through a lot of this stuff. Uh, we do a lot of cooking from scratch. And starting here is a good thing. Um, going, if you've been buying flour by the two pound bag or five pound bag or sugar by the five pound bag, moving up to going into a big wholesale store and buying a 50 pound bag, that's that's one step in the direction of having more food available to you at your house. You don't have to be making the long-term storage measures to make a step in the right direction. So start with a Rubbermaid tote, a $5 Rubbermaid tote, and get a 50 pound bag of something, put it in there, start cooking stuff from scratch. That's a great step in the direction of food security. But if you wanna go beyond that, um, Mylar bags are really good for storing things. And um, I got these, from a place called Wallaby. Um, and they come, make sure you read, because you want them to come with the oxygen absorbers, because if you want long-term storage, they need to have an oxygen absorber in it. And you just put your food in here and then you seal the top. I use my hair straightener. You just need something hot to seal the top with and you have the absorber in there. If I were to put like pasta in here with as big as my family is, um, this is dinner for our family plus like if we have like a couple of guests over, which is often the right amount of pasta for our family. If I am having to open one pound packs, I have to open like three of them. Uh, but what I bought here were the big five pound bags of pasta. Actually, these were boxes that had two five pound bags in them. So 10 pound boxes of pasta. And in splitting it up into this, I ended up paying less than a dollar a pound for this pasta. Now the Mylar bag, you do have to take that cost into consideration. I can't remember how much uh, these cost because I bought them a little while ago. But um, now you can also get the larger ones of these and it's good like if you have a bucket like this and you're gonna use your, you're gonna buy 50 pound bags of stuff and then put it in here and then use your Mylar bag to refill this bucket. Just before you go on and buy a bunch of material, think about what you are trying to preserve and act accordingly. I will tell you though that these are really good for storing pasta because when you pour this pasta out, you can reuse this bag. Um, you can just cut the part off that you sealed last time and it'll hold less because you'll be sealing it lower, but don't throw these away. Reuse them as long as you put something in it that can be cleaned out. Now, that's just two ideas of being able to buy bulk affordable food and break them down um, to amounts that you can use feasibly uh, in the meantime, but that, will but that will store longer term in case you need them. Uh, because if you go buy a bunch of food that you can't just use on a regular basis, if there's not some emergent need, um, I think that I understand why people do that. But for me, if I'm buying the food, I wanna be able to cycle it in to our meal plan now. And yes, maybe continue to buy and stock up that store and put on the back end of that storage, but be able to work those things in now so that I don't just have food that sits there really long term and then never gets used. And I mean, that's like the best case scenario is that we don't need these emergency preparedness stores, that we always have the ability to acquire and produce more food. 
there are people who have so much information about doing long-term storage, but I feel like what I really wanted to show today is that you don't have to have a freeze dryer. Um, I have a freeze dryer. I, I like my freeze dryer. I'm actually not, don't have it set up right now, so I don't have a place. We're working on putting a place together that we can use that before the harvest season starts, but you don't have to have that to be doing uh, preparedness. You don't have to be growing a two acre garden to be doing preparedness. You can just buy these pounds. None of this is organic. None of this is expensive fancy food. Um, this is just real basic restaurant supply quality, you know, relatively affordable food that I'm putting up in relatively affordable ways. And right here I've got tomato sauce and pasta, lots of it that could make many, many meals for my hungry family if need be. And that makes me feel good. That makes me feel safe. And therefore, this is worth doing for me. And the thing that I really wanted to say, and I think that it's really precious that this video started with a happy rainbow on a happy day. And I want to remind you, this is not out of fear. But the thing that I really want to say is, we have to make space for people to do these things imperfectly. And it's fine to say, you know, this is what I'm doing for my family. Take my advice at your own risk. That's fine to say. Uh, but what I don't want to do is shut everybody up that's doing the imperfect and affordable and simple things uh, because we have some this idea of how this would be done ideally. I mean, ideally we would never need this stuff. Ideally we would have fruitful gardens every single year and um, world peace and all of that stuff. I mean, ideally we wouldn't need this. And I wanna teach the safe way of doing things, but I can't teach you the perfect way of doing things because I'm not perfect. Uh, but this is my imperfect preparation. And I think that, um, I think that ignoring imperfect preparation has to be done at your own risk too. I, I think that ignoring the urgency um, has to be done at your own risk too. And even saying that, like I, I, know I, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, it's not a thing of fear, it's a thing of wisdom. Have some food in your house. It's a good time to get some food together in your house and continue growing the garden and continue working towards sustainability and continue supporting people and educating people with the things you do know how to do and continue enjoying when you see rainbows and feeling joy in your day to day and feeling hope at the preparations that you make and not feeling fear. I am looking at the future full of hope and joy and excitement, but I'm also canning these tomatoes and mylar bagging this pasta and it makes me feel good and I want to honestly be able to share that with you guys. So thank you for hanging out with me today. I even, I want to say I'm sorry that this is intense, but I'm not fully sorry. I'm, I'm sorry that it is intense. I'm not sorry that I said it. <laughs> thank you guys. I bless you. Until next time. <laughs>